everybody. It's lovely to see you. Good morning and uh, welcome to those joining us online. Um, it's good to see you too and it's good to have you here, um, uh, many of you here as well, um, all socially distanced and ready to worship God. And this morning we're having our first Holy Communion for months. Oh, Isn't that good? I like change. So that'll make a change, won't it? That'll be a good change. Um, the notices you'll find the notices you'll find on the um, uh, on Church Talk. I think there are a few copies um, available at the back of the church if you don't receive it electronically already. Um, so let's just pray for a moment. Let's just pray. Our Father God. We want to thank you that we can worship you together here in this place. We thank you that you are with us here and you're with everyone watching us live and watching back after the service online. We pray that you will bless all those who worship with us 
And Father God, we thank you for this sunny, bright morning. Help us to remember the power of your resurrection in our hearts and in our lives. And as we enjoy communion with you this morning, we pray that you would transform us by the renewing power of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So before I move on, are there any notices I should mention? Um, I'm looking across at Stephanie in case there's anything I should mention particularly. Oh, just a reminder to come and see us on Wednesday morning. That, that was good fun on Wednesday, wasn't it, Val? Yeah, it was lovely. So Wednesday morning is yeah, our coffee. Um, at what time does it start? Well, quarter to nine. Quarter to nine, nine for the early risers. Uh, a bit later. Until about quarter to eleven, is it? So yeah, a couple of hours. 11, yeah. That's right. And um, how did how did the first one go, Stephanie? Very well. There's lots of visitors. They stayed chatting. Yeah, it's so it's a really nice morning. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So Wednesday morning. So that's great to have that. And you'll find lots of other notices on Church Talk as well. So now um, we're going to say our parish prayer together, which and the words should appear on the screen in just a moment. So we say together. Loving Heavenly Father, please help us to grow to be more like Jesus. We want to get to know you, Christ, together by loving one another, serving others, and being at the heart of our community. Lord Jesus, please encourage us on our way. Amen. So now I'm going to invite the music group um, to sing our first song, which is My Jesus, My Saviour, Shout to the Lord. And just to let you know, those of you joining us today, or anybody who wants to turn up after the service, I have song sheets to sing our songs outside the church, which we're allowed to do after the service. So music group, My Jesus, My Saviour. Oh, my. 
And to follow, I'd like to invite Elizabeth now to bring our interactive prayer. Good morning, Judge. To be, to be together as a family in the presence of our Father. And this morning, I thought about it over the weeks. What can we pray about? And I thought, let's just thank God. Because this time last year, we were all in our homes. We didn't know where we were going, but today we are still here. Not because we are good, not because of who we are, but for the special grace and mercies of God. A lot of people went to bed last night. They are gone now. Some are going as I'm talking, and some will go before the end of the day. But because of his mercy, we are here, standing on our two feet, eating and drinking. But we can only do this because of the special grace of God that is on our life. And what can we give to this great God who has protected us, preserved us, and provided for all our needs, giving us fresh air we breathe in? When you wake up in the morning, what do you say first? What do you do? Do you reach out for your phone or do you say, Lord, I thank you for another beautiful day? So today, this morning, where you are, under the mask, and if you are in your home, just to raise your hand and thank God. Say beautiful words to him for the one who has done a lot for each and every one of us. Who has not asked for a penny? Say thank you to him. Raise up your hands. Okay, we cannot pray aloud, but you can still pray under your, under your mask. You can say thank you. Look at your family. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your friends. Thank God for your neighbors. Just say something to God. Lord, we 
thank you for our lives. We thank you for fresh air. We thank you for the water we drink. Those little things we take for granted, Lord. We thank you, especially for another beautiful day. It doesn't matter what you are going through. For the fact that you have life, and you are still standing in spite of everything that has gone, we need to praise him. That's all he wants from us. Nothing else. You cannot give him money because it is him that has given you power to get wealth in the first place. So what can you give him apart from thanksgiving? Lord, we come this morning with a thanksgiving to honor you, to worship you for who you are. <coughs> Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for taking us through and still holding us. Thank you, Lord, for being there all the time. Thank you for not letting go, Lord, for not letting that. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our neighbors. Thank you for this community. Thank you for our country, Lord. Thank you for our children. Thank you for everything, Lord. We give you all the honor because you are worthy, Lord. Worthy of our praise. Worthy to be exalted in spite of everything, Lord. We may not know what you are doing in our lives, but we know that we have a great God and a good Father. And you love all of us, they said. Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And now, let's bring our families into God's hand. Let's pray that as we go out from here today and throw out the week, that his protection will be upon us, our families and friends and our neighbors. Let us pray for our neighbors, especially those around us, around CHS, around St. Mary's, that the ones that are here to know Christ, we seek him and come to know him. Father, I just want to thank you for all you've done, for all you are doing and all you are going to do. Thank you for who you are, for what you are. Thank you that you are a good Father and a good God. You are so great that there is nobody to compare you with. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor because you are worthy, Lord worthy of our praise, worthy of our lives, worthy of everything, Lord. Thank you that you are there all the time. You are a tower of refuge. You are a hiding place where we feel afraid, Lord. Thank you for this and for everything else. Lord, we commit ourselves into your hand that as we go out from here today, and during the week that you will continue to be with us, you continue to protect us, continue to preserve us and provide for all our needs. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church.
as um, Elizabeth returns to the media desk, thank you Elizabeth for our prayers this morning. Um, in a moment we're going to follow on with our creed, but I just thought it would be a good idea. We've clapped the NHS, we did for the few months at the beginning of the um, pandemic, but I think it would be good for us to clap the Lord for being with us and for giving his comfort to those in great need this year and also to us who are now here. So let's um, actually, why don't we stand up and let's just give our Father, our God, a round of applause. Please stay standing, if you can, because we're going to say the words of our creed now. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and she shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit down. And Elizabeth, was there another prayer there as well in the notes? Yeah. There is, so. Let's, uh, let's say these words together. Creator God, you breathe life into all you have made through design and diversity, color and complexity, matter and mystery. You astound us by your power, your imagination, your involvement. Carry on speaking. We praise you. We worship you. We live for you. Jesus, Son of the Father, you came to show God to us through message and miracle, touch and tenderness, passion and pain. You reveal the God of compassion, of healing, of grace. We praise you, we worship you, we live for you. Spirit of Christ, Holy Presence of God, you breathe life into us. Through fear and fire, gift and grace, power and peace, you equip, transform and send your people. We praise you, we worship you, we live for you. And in that vein, we're going now the music group is going to sing, Thank You for Saving Me. Great is the Lord.
saving me, what can I say? You are my everything, I will sing your praise. You shed your blood for me, what can I say? in a by name. And now I'd like to invite our two readers, followed by Stephanie, to come and speak to us. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, the first reading is from Acts chapter 4, and it's verses uh, 5 to 12. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Aeneas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power, or what name, did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple, and ask how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord.
I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. They, there shall be one flock, one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. Where does he come from? Thanks be to God for his wonderful life. on your chairs. Yeah, you haven't got a picture yeah. on your chair, there's plenty around. Um, and just for people who are online, um, you need to be linking to https um, colon forward slash forward slash whitfordparish.com forward slash images forward slash the underscore good underscore shepherd underscore April underscore 25th underscore 2021 PDF, and that you should find the same picture. So basically, it's on our Whitford Parish um, website under the services. You should find the same image. So, I want you to have a look first of all at this picture. So, have a look at this one first. <coughs> so have a good look at it. question is easy, so um, it's not a difficult question, it's not meant to be a difficult question, it's meant to be easy. So what do you see? <laughs> so tell me anything you can see in the picture. A shepherd carrying a sheep. Yeah. A shepherd carrying a sheep, yeah. anything else? Holding it round his neck. Holding it round his neck. <laughs> Say that again. Yeah, I think it's um, it's it's made out of yeah, it's it's a, um, it's cut you know carved so yes, out of a um, stone, isn't it? Yep. He's lost an arm, yes, this shepherd has lost an arm. Is it like that holding the back of the sheep? You can see his hand. Ah, you can see his hand, well done. Oh, good. So that's why the sheep looks so comfy, he's got him really, he's got him really secure, hasn't he? Then with the two hands, thank you, um, Lynette. Yeah. <coughs> Anything else? He has got a belt on, hasn't he? Which is traditional for shepherds to have a belt with a bag. Can't particularly see the bag, but certainly can see the belt. The bag is at the front, isn't it? Like a bag. yeah, yeah. I think it might be. I think it might be. Yeah, at the front. Yeah, yeah. Just enough to have the bits and pieces he needs. And then um, this particular um, statue was eventually made into a fountain. And so that's why his mouth um, has got a sort of round O hole. Um, and the commentator said that um, it makes him think of him singing to the sheep or um, it, 
because now it's not a fountain, it's just uh, been taken into a museum, so it's just standing. Um, but he th thinks, well, the, the sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd, don't they? So he thinks that uh, it's a reminder that he was singing to the sheep and the sheep was calm. Okay, so um, if we turn over, this one's a little bit more detailed, so have a moment just to have a look. Those at home, if you haven't found it, that's the other picture. There's lots going on in this picture. So what do you see in this picture? The fountain. And the man they just sitting up. Yeah. Some trees. Some trees, yes. The plowman. The plowman, the the yeah, he's up, isn't he? And working up, up on the field. Three or four lambs. Yeah, it looks like some sheep in the front. I think there's quite a lot actually if you look carefully in the oh, field. Yeah. There's a lot. I would say it's a lamb in front of the sheep. A lamb? Yeah. So you can see a lamb. Oh, it does look like a lamb in front of the sheep, yeah? I'm with you. See a crook and a bowl. A crook and a bowl that belong to the shepherd. Obviously, there's a man working in the field beyond, but there looks to be another man at the bottom of the field with the sheep in. Yeah. Yep. So there's a man up on the up on the, the top is, working um, with the plough. Is he a slave for the sheep, or is he? And the shepherd. I think he's the shepherd. Is he a slave? He's having a snooze, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything about where he's having a snooze? Does it look the field? Yeah, it's a sort of arbor. Yeah, it's a sort of arbor. It is a sort of arbor, isn't it? Um, commentator thinks that it relates quite well to um, our idea that the shepherd would go to sleep by the gate, the yeah. hole to the gates that lets the sheep in, so he would be there to protect the sheep. notice anything that was happening. Anything else that anyone's noticed? The colours from blue garters and then red garters. Yeah, there are some interesting colours in his clothes. Yeah. <coughs> In the orange. Yeah. A shawl. Perhaps a shawl? Do you think it's a shawl? What do you think it is? Is it a flag? It could be a flag. Sure, could be a flag. Jumpers, yeah, I think maybe he has hung something up. Yeah, perhaps it wasn't that cold. Didn't need the extra blanket. Yeah. Lots of birds flying around, aren't they? Mm. The picture. Good. Well done, thank you. So, um, a few things that the commentator of the picture noticed as well is that it was sunrise, which is why the farmer was up ploughing his field, but that for the shepherd, all is well. The sheep are safe, and so he's able to rest. He's been watching them all night. Yeah, and then he can just have a he can have a sleep. He is the protector of the sheep, the good shepherd, a shepherd who knows his sheep and risks his life for his sheep. The sheep listen to his voice and know it. Well, we see that on the television, don't we? Yeah. When a real shepherd talks to his sheep, have you ever seen the them doing the the sheep when the, the dogs round up the <laughs> yeah I quite like that um, or when a real shepherd talks to his sheep they seem to know his voice and they do respond 
Chris Button lives on our estate and he's blind. And uh, he came past the cafe on Wednesday, so I called out. And so he came over for a cuppa. He knows our voices well. And I'm always amazed at the way he locates very quickly who is talking to him. I wonder if you do that on the telephone. I know um, there are people who know me on the telephone. There are people who don't. Um, one of the places is the diocesan office. So if I ring up to speak to the bookshop, they usually know who it is that's rung them, which always amazes me. Um, I know that some people have uh, the numbers, don't they, that come up and then tells them on their phone who it is that's ringing. So I suppose that's a slightly different method. But... Uh, some people are really easy to identify, aren't they? You hear, hear them straight away, you know who, exactly who it is. Um, but if you know them less well, it's not so easy. But Jesus talks about shepherds who do not do their job so well. So these are good shepherds in our images. But um, in the passage, he also refers to shepherds that are not doing such a good job somebody who's not invested in caring for the sheep so that when something bad happens he just runs away for example if a wolf comes along he just disappears into the sunset well that can be like our faith jesus often talks about being rooted in love grounded in faith and prayer if these aspects are not real in our lives, then when troubles come, there is not a deep enough foundation to hold us firm. Or when we see troubles come upon others, which shake their faith, we turn away instead of praying for them and supporting them. It's in Ezekiel chapter 34 that the Bible speaks about poor shepherds. And by that, he says that they are people who care only for themselves. So who do we care for? Poor shepherds don't go out and look for the lost. So, now I don't think that people who are not here today are lost, so don't take the analogy too literally. But I thought if you have a look round today and see if there's someone missing who you normally sit nearby or... Um, have a chat with after the service Father. perhaps you could give them a ring and check on them and see how they are poor shepherds do not understand the needs of the flock and so I think that we are being challenged again to read our Bible to know the stories to hear God speaking to us through it all and God says he will come again and search for his flock and bring them back to the safety of the sheepfold. So that is our job now, to seek the lost and the lonely and remind them of God's love and witness to each one of us in sending Jesus to die for us, to take away our sins and restore us in his family, the church. So let's be good shepherds of the sheep caring for one another and seeking the lost. Amen. And I just thought, just to, to put an, um, a coda on the end, what can we do? Well, I do feel that we can pray. Pray is a great, prayer is a great tool, isn't it? You can come to our prayer meeting on a Tuesday, you can pray at home, and you can pray and remember anyone who's not here today, um, just wherever they are, not because I think they're lost necessarily, but because I think it will be good for them to know that they're remembered. Thank you. So before the music group sings our next song, we're going to say words of peace to one another. Of course, in normal times, we could go and shake one another's hands. We're not permitted to do that in church. So my suggestion is we do as we did uh, on Easter Sunday, which is use the, uh, the peace sign on these. Yeah. Like in India, they use this at peace, don't they? No, I say peace. 
So we can sort of look towards our neighbours and wish them the peace of the Lord when we do that. So would you like to stand? But of course at home, if you're in a bubble, you can hug them as much as you like. <laughs> so the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's show one another a sign of peace. here at church, you feel free to sit down. And now we're going to, you'll have noticed over the last few weeks we've been learning what to some of us is a new song. Um, it starts you with a word at the beginning, one with God most high. And this has been a song we've been singing uh, since Easter. Um, and it's called What a Beautiful Name.
you have no rival, you have no equal. And now I'd like to invite Stephanie to continue with our communion. <coughs> Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon a cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look, in, we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And so we say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near in faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Make a line here. That'd be okay.
it's nice to have communion again, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We're getting there in stages, aren't we? I hope so. <laughs> we are. Let's join together. Father of all, Lord, we, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of the glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. So the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those you love this day and always. Amen. So now we, uh, the, mu uh, the music group now sings our final hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. And just a reminder for those who want to, we will be singing some or all of our songs out on the lawn after the service, where we're allowed to sing out loud in a socially distanced way. But before that, we conclude our service with amazing grace. Say. 